Hey, guess what time it is? It's time for Breedin' Radio. Brought to you by Pertnier Outdoors. This is a spring edition, which means it's turkey season, which means there's turkeys out there breeding them. Like getting on top and, and breeding them. That's what turkeys do. It's pretty cool if you've ever seen it. But anyway, listen to these stories. These are real people from right around the corner. We're going out there and putting turkeys on the ground. They ain't breeding them no more. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, everybody. Billy here, and welcome to week two of our Breeding Them Radio series focused on turkey season here in New York. And uh, in this week's episode, we've got three kill stories coming to you from three hunters that are participating in our Pertnier Outdoors 2020 Turkey Challenge. So we're going to have an interview with uh, Alex Clark, which Alexandra Nicole on Facebook, um, but I believe she goes by Alex Clark. Um, she is uh, she's going to bring us our story. She's our current leader in the clubhouse, so she has the uh, the top bird as far as overall uh, beard length and spur length. And uh, so she had a an interesting story. So we'll hear from her. Um, we will hear from Nick Scott on his bird that he shot opening morning, as well as Scott Murray with the bird that he shot opening morning. So Jimbo has been doing a, a killer job getting these stories, and uh, we've got a bunch to come at you as a, a multiple people um, over the first uh, six days of the season here have put birds on the ground that are within our, our Pertnier Challenge, and uh, we're using that to uh, kind of help fill in our breeding and radio at least while we got birds hitting the ground from those individuals so we've got a a lot of stories to come to you but we're going to try to keep these in a digestible length so this first one will be just those three um, and i hope you enjoy so check this out make sure you uh you share it with people these are some good stories and uh, definitely want to help spread the word about what we're doing here with our breeding and radio segment as we uh, are trying to get local people from around New York uh, that are putting birds on the ground get them on and tell their story. And uh, there's always something a little fun and educational as well as just fun to hear a, hear a story from somebody about their experience out in the woods and, uh, and their success that they had. So hope you enjoy. Uh, thanks again to Jimbo for doing this. He's been doing an awesome job uh, following up with everybody right after the weekend to get them on or even with everything we got going on, people are hunting during the week and uh, grabbing them and getting interviews before uh before we can uh get them out to you guys and before i have a chance to get everything edited so keep up the good job jimbo appreciate it you're a natural and uh i'm watching out for my job thanks everybody enjoy it and keep feeding them and be careful if you're breeding them see ya all right on the line with breeding them radio here we got alex and rick from madison county here in new york um they were lucky enough to harvest a great bird on, I believe that was opening day, right? Yep. And Alex, you are still currently leading the turkey challenge that we put together. Um, we had another guy shoot a really good bird. I'm actually going to have him on next. Um, but he shot the bird, I believe it was yesterday morning. Um, okay. Same length spurs, but you're still, you still got them on bird length and beard length. So as of right now, that's still sitting on the top. But um, we just wanted to get a hold of you and hear your story and see how your season's been going so far. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, yeah, I took my first – he's my very first bird I've ever taken, and I took him opening morning uh, about 9.30. He came in – well, first a couple jakes came in, and I was kind of hesitant, but being my first bird, I was like, I might, I might take a jake. Um, and then all of a sudden I saw the long beard, and the whole thing happened within – a minute to 30 seconds or 30 seconds to a minute I'm sorry and done and over with and he was running into our decoy and he a shot and he hit the ground he didn't really flop much and he was done <laughs> it was really exciting <laughs> nice so that uh were you on them birds off of roost at all or were did you just hook up with them around 9 30 no it actually we heard one bird gobble off in the distance at, at first light and that was the only bird we heard gobble until nine o'clock. We had one, there's a creek that splits our property and he was on the other side. He was gobbling away. Um, so I was calling back to him and all of a sudden we heard just clucking behind us and it ended up being a group of the group of five Jakes. 
and uh, they popped up into the field, and he was he was running with them dead silent. But <laughs> so did they gobble it all on the way in, or were they all just came in no, silent? Just, yeah. The jakes were just clucking their way in. We figured huh. it was hens. I, yeah, I'd call, and they just keep clucking up behind us, and they popped out <laughs> popped out ten yards down from where we were sitting. Jesus, so were you on a field edge? Yep. What were you yeah, running for decoys? I have. I just bought an Avian X uh, HDR Jake decoy this year, and we had. Uh, would we have four hens, a lay down, a looker, a breeder, and a feeder. And that Tom, when he came into the field, did not like that Jake decoy being there. <laughs> he came on. He puffed. Start, started to puff up and. He just took off running. I kind of wish we had given him another second or two just to see what he would have done, but it was my first bird, and I was not about to let him get away. I was going to ask you, did you let him beat up the decoy, or did you take him right away? No, out? I was just – I was so excited. I just pulled the trigger. Yeah, nice. she shot him. She got him on the run about five feet off the decoy. <laughs> That's awesome. And everything – What did the Jakes do? they stand around, or they take off? For a minute, they kind of hung out. Yeah, they, they hung out for a few minutes. They ran off to about 40, 45 yards and kind of looked around like what happened. And she was excited enough. She took off running into the field to <laughs> go find find the Oops. bird. And they just ran back into the hedgerow that they were close to. And they, we saw them a couple of days later. They, they weren't super spooked. They didn't fly. But they're still around. Yeah, Jake's being Jake's. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen some really cool videos, you know, somebody will shoot and the birds will stand there gobbling and beating up the one that's on the ground. Yeah. I've never I've never really got to experience that part of it because normally you shoot and jump up and run and go out and get your bird. But you watch the videos, you know, guys will shoot them and just sit there and wait. And I'm like, I wonder if that stuff would go on if we didn't jump up and run right out there. But, yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't even give it a second. I, I was up and at it. <laughs> she didn't even that's rack awesome. another round into the gun. Nope, I was no. running after him. I mean, he was <laughs> – hardly flopping and I just wanted to see how big he was yeah yeah my the one my buddy shot a couple of years ago on opening day he just dumped it and then we just sat it was like 15 20 yards and the thing just folded and uh we're just sitting there we're like holy crap and it's like literally first light right off a of roost and there's other birds around so we didn't want to do anything but then we're sitting there laughing and celebrating and all of a sudden the thing starts flopping and I'm like okay you might want to go get that thing <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Because we're right on the crest of the hill, and if that thing started flopping, it'd have gone all the way down the hill. Yeah, we. Yeah, uh, I just got a tactic cam this year too, so I was trying to get her first bird on video. It happened so quick. The only thing yeah. I got on video was like a second before the shot. I got the bird running, and all of a sudden he folds. Yeah, yeah. We've been talking about trying to video more, and I got the tripod set up with a camera this year, and I got a GoPro, but it's just. For me, I haven't had any action this year. So while I'm trying, I need action first to get something on camera. But um, I have found in the past that just I give a lot of people the guys that credit the guys that videotape because it is a whole nother element. It's hard yeah. enough to get them when you're not taping, but then you throw the camera in the mix there and you're trying to move around and get it all filmed. And I don't have the patience for it. So normally I just throw the camera aside and shoot the turkey and worry about the camera later. <laughs> yeah. And there's definitely. That was, for me, that was also one of the first birds I've had come running into a decoy set up like that. And I can only imagine for her being the first time experiencing that all within oh, yeah. 10 yards of where we were sitting. That, is that how long the shot was? About 10, 15 yards? I, I, maybe 10 yards at the most. <laughs> he was pretty close. That is awesome. Imagine if he'd have gobbled right on top of you there. Yeah. It would definitely been a yeah. different experience. Oh, yeah. That's she was I, actually oh, – go ahead. I love it when you're working a bird and, like, they'll shut up for a while, but you know they're probably coming. Mm -hmm. And then they gobble and they're, like, 30 yards away. And it's like, holy crap, there they are. <laughs> they're coming. Yeah. I think it was probably better being my first, like, my first bird that I really didn't know he was there all of a sudden he was there and I was just like all right time to take the shot because otherwise I feel like I would have hyped myself up and made myself oh, nervous yeah. and if I just <laughs> he's like aim and shoot when he met when he oops uh gets you a shot aim and shoot yeah. and that's what I did and he just hit the ground so have you that shot much it. before were you pretty fluent with a gun you're comfortable with it yeah but um what have I been in MWTF for five, five or six years now and 
when we started dating, that's when I first started going out. So I've been out the past this was your second season. two years. Three years ago, I was out west working. So yeah, I've been out the past two years, and we haven't had much luck. Yeah. So we knew this year we hunted down in Jersey um, for a day down there before we came up here, and we knew we had private land up here that we had a pretty good chance on. So, so you guys do yeah. much hunting in Jersey or no? Um, I'm from Jersey. He just moved down there. So we're trying to find more public land down there. I don't have land down there, private land to hunt on. So it's a whole different ball game because up here we've got so much private land. Right. That's what we're used to. And yeah. there's a ton of state land up here too. Yeah. Even yeah. Even if, even if you don't have private, there's so much state yeah. land. It's ridiculous. There is a, there's a decent amount of state land in Jersey. It's just a lot more choppy. Yeah, smaller chunks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've never. I mean, you think of Jersey, you don't think of hunting. So it's kind. Of, it's funny to be like, <laughs> yeah, we hunted Jersey, and then we came up. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of nice to hunt that one day to kind of knock the cobwebs off before opening day here, and yeah, make sure the spread everything decoys look fine, rust out for calling, and yeah, I've seen a lot of stuff on those Jake decoys, you know, over you know, a breeding head and hen. And I'm like, man, I might, cause I got, um, when they came out with B mobile, that big strutter, I got yeah, him yeah. and I've just never really had luck with him. And it's bulky yeah. to carry around. And I end up just throwing it in the weeds and going and hunting and coming back and getting it later. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually the last couple of years run an avian X uh, half strut Jake decoy. And for some, I don't know why. And I've talked to some friends that have the same issue, but birds just seem to run from it. So that's why I went to the the quarter strut to see this yeah. year, and I I have the uh, not the more less aggressive head on it, but every time we've had three good three successful hunts this year with birds coming right into the decoys and no issues. And yeah, that might the be one, oh, that oh. might be the ticket right there. Yeah, I had uh, I actually harvested a tom this morning that came running right in and beat the crap out of the Jake decoy. He came running right in with, with two other Jakes and he was not happy that it was there. <laughs> was that right off a of roost or was that later in the morning? No, that was five, five forty five this morning. Watched the hen, the Jakes and a hen fly into the field and the Tom came running from the wood line. It came across about 250 yards across the field. And he locked right on your decoys and ran right in. Yep. They, they slowly worked until about 50 yards out and that Tom just took off running and puffed right up at the decoy and started beating the crap out of it. <laughs> so you let him beat it up a little. Yeah. I didn't have much, much chance to get on him before he got there. So I was like, well, let's see how this goes. Yeah. That's awesome. About that's seven a, yards in front of me. So that's a hell of an experience. You, yeah. Were you in a blind or just sitting out on the edge of the woods? Just sitting out in the edge. Nice. That's that can be very difficult with how much they pick up movement. But yeah, they they haven't seemed to care too much once they get locked onto those decoys. Might might have to invest in some of those. <laughs> yeah, that that was uh, I think that was the key to our success this year, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, how how big was your bird? Do you measure that all out? Uh, mine was I have inch long spurs. Eight and a half inch beard, which, uh, just under twenty pounds. Nice, forty four inches long. That's funny because you do you guys watch the hunting public at all? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, it's funny because it's like who'd ever thought of measuring the length of the bird? Yeah, and then, one of my buddies actually, uh, Andrew Noble. Just he, yeah. Last last year he started talking to me about how long the overall length of birds, and I was like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> And then he kind of explained it a little bit. I was like, oh, that makes more sense. Yeah, he was actually on our Turkey Talk um, podcast with Brian yeah, Godfrey. That. Yeah. So they were that was, Kansas? Uh, they were in Colorado. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> when, when we were recording that, they went, I don't know, they were sitting in a parking lot somewhere together. <laughs> they are just tuned in on their cell phone. But it was funny because we did that Turkey Talk podcast and then we went out and none of us have killed anything. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think Noble got himself a bird this morning. Yeah, I think I did see that. He said down to the wire on it. Yeah. The noon hour. 
Yeah, it's been it's slow. It's, it's been a weird year. Mostly, I think, because of the weather. Yeah, it's been so hot and cold. I'm hoping here in the next week or so, with the cold weather, if the hens got nests, they're gonna have to sit on them, and hopefully that'll free the gobblers up. That's what I'm going with, anyways. Yeah, I mean, it was. I left the the house this morning. It was 26 degrees. Everything Frigid. was frosted. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I was thinking it looks like they're going to get a little snow maybe Saturday and that Sunday morning. Yeah, they're calling for it. I was thinking that would be interesting to get up there and try to kill one in the snow. That would be a cool video. <laughs> yeah. But I haven't made yeah. it up yet with all this stuff going on with Corona and everything. Everything's, you know, normally I go up and my uncle's got a camp up there right next to my in-laws. We would all go up there and stay up there for the weekend. But with all that going on, we're not – you know, staying in somebody else's house and whatnot. So yeah, that's kind of the situation we're in. We're currently in a fifth wheel in a driveway because we can't stay in the house. <laughs> so. Nothing wrong with that. Nope. nope. Turkey camp 2020. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. <laughs> well, thank you guys for hopping on and uh, good luck us. with the rest of your yeah. season. And uh, maybe we'll have to catch up with you later and have a conversation about the uh, studies you've done, Alex, with the turkeys. That'd be an yeah. interesting, con interesting conversation to get into. Yeah, I worked under some grad students down in uh, Alabama, working for Auburn grad students doing some turkey studies. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, that turkey is definitely a lot more fun. Oh yeah, that that <laughs> might be something we might want to get together here in the future and talk about. So yeah, definitely. Thank you guys very much, and good luck the rest of the season. Thanks, Thank you, you too. too. All right, so I am here tonight with uh, Nick Scott. Uh, he was on the podcast here just a couple weeks ago. Um, Billy had been watching a bird uh, for about five, six days before his season there. Thought he had them all lined up on a tee. Come to find out he was nowhere to be found on opening day. And then uh, he talked to his buddy Nick here, and Nick ended up getting them. So uh, if you want to, Nick, just go ahead and uh, share the story with us. Yeah, so um, the the night before opening day, uh, we ended up – I knew Billy was going to be out there at the property and uh, scouting, and uh, I could see – he. I knew he had been watching this bird for a while, so um, – and he had told me he had heard a bird on my grandma's property, which is right next to the property that he's hunting. Um, and uh, – but it was a few days – when he heard that bird, it was a few days before – and uh, so I said, well, I'll just go over there and try to get lucky. And if he does go over on my grandma's and roost in the morning, at least I know I have, you know, something to go after. Um, and then if, if he did go up and roost where Billy had been seeing him in a couple different spots, then I would, uh, I'd just stay out of there and right. uh, let them guys get after him. But, uh, so when I pulled up, actually, um, I had to go – to a bunny pass down the road and he got me working on one of his guns and uh, when I went by I checked the field and there was no turkeys in it and then I turned around and I come back and I parked and I looked out there binoculars and I could see the Tom was out there already and uh, he was actually right in front of Billy's blind when I seen him first and uh, so I ended up just going around because if where that field is he can see for a long ways from where I parked my truck so I just went took the long way around and I got to a spot in the woods where I could see and I could see the Tom out there he was strutting and he had four hens with him and then we had a little like storm system I guess threatened to blow in so I ended up just backing up because I had my camera and stuff with me and um so I didn't get nothing you know soaking wet and well, it never ended up raining, so I go back to looking at the field again, and it's just the four hens, and the gobbler's gone. Now, when I was standing back in the pine tree, I did end up hearing a, um, a hen yelp way off on my grandma's property, and I don't know if it actually happened or not, but this time, I think he might have broke off of that field and went towards where that hen was. And because we never, I talked to Billy the same night, we, you know, we never seen that gobbler again after he, I don't think he's seen him at all, really. But um, 
I had seen him for a little while, and then I watched the hens fly up, and he never said a word or nothing. So I knew them guys were going to be there next morning, so I decided, you know, just to do, if he did hear that hen, he did go over onto my grandma's property, so we'd just try it in the morning. And if he ended up on their property, then we would just get out of there and let them hunt it. And uh, so next morning comes, and we get back up in there. I see, you know, look like they had the mafia parked over there across the road. And I think there was three, three pickup trucks parked over there and two blinds sitting out in the field. And yeah. um, so we ended up sneaking down. We just went right to the woods. And we kind of set up and didn't hear nothing for like the first hour or so. And then I made a call and I ended up hearing a gobbler way, way off. Um, total opposite direction of where Billy and them were hunting. So we tried to make a move on them and get, there's a little, little ravine that runs through my grandma's property. And we tried to get across it because I knew there was a good chance I probably wasn't going to call them across it. So I wanted to be on the same side as them. And uh, he ended up beating us to it. And uh, he beat us to it. And he went down right into the bottom of the field. And, you know, Billy's been watching this turkey out here all, all for like the past week. And I said, well, he hit the field. He's, I know the hens are out there. I could hear them. And he gobbled right at the field. And I said, well, I had to look at my girlfriend. I was trying to get her, her first turkey. And I looked at her. I says, there's a good chance we're not going to get him out of that field. I said, we'd be better off just going somewhere else and trying to find something new to try to strike up and yeah so she ended up having to go back to work at around 9 30 ish and uh i was gonna go check on my grandpa who was hunting with uh one of my cousins um and uh he's i think he's 15 and i was gonna go check on them well come to find out they had a turkey goblin but he ended up or they ended up losing them and he shut up and so they left and went to a different property so i just went out and uh sat at, a, at their property um, i actually parked at a property that um i do a lot of deer hunting at and i just kind of i got permission all the way to my grandpa's it's i got a lot of permission in that block it's it's weird how the block lays but i got permissions on both ends and in the middle of it for turkeys anyways nice and uh so I go and I walk to my grandpa's property and I'm sitting there just kind of hanging out and all of a sudden I hear a gunshot and it was sounded like it was possibly in the same block. Thought it might have been one of them guys over there, one of you guys or the guy sitting over there in the blinds that had the three trucks parked there and Bill with Billy. And as soon as that gunshot went off, I heard a turkey gobble. <laughs> I said, man, he's a long way to go. <laughs> so I just started calling to him, and there was this huge, there's a huge brush lot in the end of that block. And I didn't think I'd be able to call him through that. So I started working around, and I made it about halfway, and he gobbled again without me even calling. Or he gobbled, he was already halfway to the spot that I had just left. He was already coming in. And, uh, but he gobbled in that one spot three times. So I didn't think he was going to come. I thought I was going to have to cut the distance to him. Right. So I, just, I ran back to where I was before and, uh, just made a couple of slight calls and he ended up, I'm, I'm editing the video. It's actually uploading right now, but you can see in the video, I have the camera pointed one way and then he gobbles and he actually turns me right off the tree and I'm just sitting there flat on the ground. <laughs> no tree behind me really whatsoever and he comes into about 45 yards and um i was able to shoot him but i i know me and billy talked about it and uh to see if you know we thought it was the same bird i don't know if it actually was the same bird but now that i'm thinking you know if he's not seeing the turkey anymore i'm, I'm it probably is i mean it's the same block it was a matter of you know, a little over a quarter mile, and I shot him at, I believe it was 1040, I shot that turkey at, so I gave them boys plenty of time to get the job done. <laughs> yeah, so. they can't they can let them sit around that long and not expect them to go get shot, right? 
No, I mean, I, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I moved out here once he hit the field, and then I went all the way up. We hunted a couple of different properties, and then I ended up coming back and, uh, you know, trying the total opposite end of that that block, really, and um, and uh, just ended up being him. I called him in, and he had uh, about an eight-and-a-half-inch beard, uh, three-quarter-inch spurs, and I believe he was like 47 and a half inches long i don't know it's on that contest you guys are running there yeah i was i was checking out the chart here before i got on with you i think there's six five or six so far that are on there and i think yours is second longest at the moment and uh the one that's the first longest uh she's holding first place and everything else right now too so that long bird might be because i think we got it set up so you can only win one category you can't win them all so that oh, okay, that long yeah, bird good. category might be open for you, and that would put you in first place there. So, yeah, no, that'd be cool. I, it's a good, you know, good thing that you guys are doing with that little contest. So, I yeah, it's my, just I bought my girlfriend a spot too. Yeah, it's just something fun to do. Billy was talking to me uh, when we were doing the turkey calling t- contest for BHA, and he was like, "I got people interested in doing a turkey calling competition." I'm like, "Yeah, but." Like it's almost season. Everybody's been doing these competitions. I'm like, let's mess around and do an actual turkey killing competition. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, for sure. I talked to Billy too. I just I got my hats in, so I'm gonna. I told him I would donate a hat, and uh, you guys could right. use it in your prizes somewhere. So. Oh, that's awesome. We appreciate it. So that bird actually fired up off another gunshot, and then when you started calling, he ran right into you. Yeah, uh, and I don't think he was too far from the gunshot either. I mean, he was he was quite the way the way. I barely heard him in the echo of the gunshot. So that's uh, awesome. That's because that's actually because we were hunting behind my house. Um, I think it was Saturday, and kind of the same thing happened. Well, I mean, we did we weren't able to kill the turkey, but uh, you know, we were looking for a bird to go after, and all of a sudden you hear boom, boom, and it was freaking, oh, oh, and he gobbled both at the gun point, and it was like, all right, well, let's go. He's not the one that's dead. <laughs> yeah. And we couldn't, we couldn't freaking, bird anyway. we couldn't freaking buy a gobble the first couple of days, so I was actually uh, supposed uh, to. Opening. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I would say opening day was a little rough. But um, Saturday, we we got – there was a lot of birds gobbling Saturday. And then Sunday, that was another really rough day. Yeah, it was uh, actually the opposite for me. The first two days were dead, and then Sunday was pretty good. But um, it was only good on roost. After they dropped down off a of roost, they kind of shut up. So I hunted till noon all three days and didn't come up with anything. So I figured I'd leave them for a few days, and I'm gonna, I was supposed to have today off, but – I thought with how slow it was the first three days, I might give it a few more days and then hit it again Friday. So, yeah, I think we're gonna kind of do the same thing. I, I got my bird. I'm pretty focused on trying to get my girlfriend one now. We had a couple pretty good encounters this weekend, but uh, uh, weren't able to connect the dots. And you know, I'm just gonna basically hunt this weekend. I might hunt with my grandpa a little bit this week and just pretty much get up and just scout some properties and try to find some birds that are still, you know, they're talking good and willing to work. We actually found a uh, hen sitting on a nest behind my house. It had 14 eggs on it already. Yeah, I think we're going to be looking at some colder weather here. I think we're going to have a lot of hens sitting on their nest and have some gobblers opening up to play. So I think it's going to get good here in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think this weekend should be good because, yeah, like you said, them hens will have to sit on their nest and, you know, keep them warm. And that should open up some opportunities, I think. My girlfriend, Corey, texted me today. She's like, I bought some Sitka base layers for this weekend. <laughs> yeah, they were calling for, like, snow. It's ridiculous. You know, it's it's going to be a little interesting to see what happens this weekend. But So you're going to have that video up on your YouTube channel, Engraved Outdoors, right? Yeah, it's uh, 43% uploaded right now. I, I – my computer went to sleep and I left it for two hours and it didn't do a damn thing. So now I'm trying to get this thing back up again. <laughs> yeah. Well, sweet deal, everybody. Check out that video on Engraved Outdoors here. It'll be up probably in the next day or so at least. Um, 
and congratulations and hopefully you get out there and get your girlfriend one so just keep feeding them yeah appreciate it sounds good have a good one you too thanks for hopping on no problem Alrighty, the third person we got on here this week with Breeding Them Radio is Scott Murray. Uh, me and Scott met last year, almost about a year ago. We did an archery shoot together there at Bowman's. Um, since then, Billy's got to do quite a bit more stuff with you. Um, you are also one of the Hunters Creek Outdoors guys. Um, we had Jamie Mann and his son on last week, and uh, he said that you called and uh, videotaped that hunt for him. Correct. So this week, um, Jamie said that he was going to be behind the camera for you. So how did that all work out? So, yeah, uh, with everything going on, Corona, I've been, you know, asking people for permission that I know that have land. And I've been, I have a, you know, about an 18 week old puppy. So I've been taking him for walks, you know, every single day leading up you know, a month before the season. And I mean, don't be wrong. I love my turkey hunting, but in years past, I would always go, but this year I knew I was going to be a little more dedicated to going. I can go every day, you know, and I, I right. take them here, but I, I do my meetings at 11 o'clock on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then I'm just always around my computer during the day, but if nothing says I can't go first thing in the morning. And if I'm working a bird for two or three hours or two hours and I can, come back and check my computer and, and head out again and you know so so I uh so I kind of had a lead on some birds you know just taking those the dock for walks and uh this particular property uh must have been like Wednesday morning last week I got the dog up and we went out at like 6 30 you know so it was you yeah. know light but, but you know yeah, maybe a little before 6.30 because uh, as I was walking through this real long, long field at my friend's zone, um, I heard a bird gobble on the right and I heard, you know, gobble to the west, a bird gobble to the east, you know, halfway back in the field. And I didn't even enter their, their back woods yet. Right. So I kept walking with the dog, did a whole huge loop around their property. I had permission from the neighbor's property and a permission from you know, one of Jamie's relatives property. And I just did a huge loop. They're all connected and uh, never heard a bird, another bird gobble. And then as I it just started to drizzle a little bit, as I was coming out of the woods, entering the field where I had heard the birds gobble on both sides. And sure enough, I saw a couple hens and, you know, trying to keep the puppy oh, yeah. with me. And he, <laughs> he's pretty good, but I immediately put him on his leash and then just brought him up along this hedge line there's a hedge line that splits the back probably 300 yards of this field i mean it's a long the, the, my friend's property is a mile long um gotcha. it's not real wide but it's a mile long so i kind of took the dog on the leash and crept up the edge of the, the hedgerow and i saw two hens and then you know i hear some gobbling and i'm like oh the gobbler's right in the woods there and i'm kind of screwed because if i walk <laughs> straight away the, the field goes up a little bit. The turkeys are going to see me. So I just kind of like, well, before I scare these turkeys, you know, I wasn't wearing camo or nothing. So right. before I scare these turkeys, I'm going to see what's out there. Well, sure enough, gobble sounded off again. And I'm like, that gobbler's in the field. And I rounded the, just one little bush in the hedgerow. And I looked out through my back there as well. That ended up being a dom, I'm consider I'm figuring a dominant bird. He was in full display. There was another Tom that was in half strut almost the whole time. And then there was another Tom that was not in any strut at all. And then there was two Jakes and then the two hens. So I was like, that's pretty good indication that they're going to be around here for opening oh, day. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what I just decided. And uh, another buddy of ours, Doug, you know, part of our group and he could hunt opening day. And, and Jamie was like, I'm just going to carry a camera. I mean, he had, you know, right away, I was like, I'll just carry a camera and, yeah. and uh, you know, we'll go from there. So, uh, the night before Jamie and I went, we tried sneaking back to about seven o'clock in that field, just along the, the far side, thinking like, you know, we'll use that hedgerow for a little bit of cover and we'll just glass with the binoculars. Well, wouldn't you know it, two of the long beards were 300 yards closer than where they were the other day and they saw us. <laughs> they didn't run hard. They just ran over the little rise. We figured they'd just be gone. So we right. just kept going to see if there's anything else back there. Cause like I said, I knew there was more than just those two. And, uh, and sure enough, 
they only went over the rise and then they just started feeding again. So then they saw us again and then they just kind of ran into the edge of the woods and then they just walked into the woods. They didn't even like, you know, they were a few hundred yards away from us, but they didn't even spook. So that's all we needed to see. And then uh, we went back there, you know, next morning and, and got set up right on the edge of the wood line and, and the birds were gobbling and we thought they got to come to this field. But for whatever reason, we sat there for half hour, 45 minutes, light calling, and they just wouldn't commit. And we thought maybe just inside the woods a little ways, there's a, uh, it's a lease property. So we didn't, you know, it's private property, so we couldn't go on it, but that's where the birds were gobbling. We thought maybe we heard someone calling. So we went to the other side of the hedgerow and then faced that woods instead of in that, you know, the edge of that woods or right on the edge of that woods. And right. uh, it was weird too, because we were, <laughs> we set the decoys up in the field and we were, we were hoping they were coming out to the field and where they went in last night, we assumed that because it was later at night, we, we assumed they were going to be roosted somewhere in there. So we, we were hoping they were, we had our backs to the birds, you know, we've never really done that before, but we were hoping yeah. they came out the field, saw our decoys and just come down, you know, obviously it doesn't ever go the way you plan, <laughs> you know? So we, we, after some calling and just sitting there quietly and we decided, okay, let's get in that hedgerow and let's just wait and we'll wait it out. Well, I know sometimes you got to be patient, you got to wait out, but we're also type of guys that we like to call goblin turkeys, you know. We oh, like yeah, definitely. Turkeys, you know, and <clears throat> we heard a bird, it looked like it sounded like they moved, you know, from north to south. So they were like, it sounded like one bird moved from north to south and it was directly in line with us now where our new setup was, but it sounded like he was even further away. So we like, screw it. Just let's screw it. You know, we're going to make a move and, uh, we're not, we're not even going to go toward them. We got so much more woods to hunt because we got the rest of our buddy's property, his woods. Then we have the, the neighbor after behind that, that private property, there's a property that I got permission to hunt. And then, you know, like I said, it connects over to where Jamie's relative is too. So then we, you know, we just made a huge loop around this property and uh, call and call and call. And I mean, to the point where, you know, we're 30, 40 yards, stop call, you know, we talk, you know, about everything and, yeah. a little more you know just just having fun and enjoying the day you know we made our big loop and uh we're like obviously uh we were gonna we parked one vehicle at one of uh, jamie's relatives property and then we parked you know where we started and we were just gonna if we got lucky and we hunted we killed the bird we were just one of us gonna take the camera whoever killed the bird and then jamie was gonna have a gun and hopefully we can spark another you know bird going and uh but since we had nothing else going that whole loop we never heard another bird well, screw it. Let's go back to that field. You know, you know I'm just in my mind. I'm like, those turkeys have got to be <laughs> yeah. coming up in the field. So we're getting into my buddy's woods, you know, and we're walking back and we're probably 300 yards from that field. And, you know, Doug at this point, probably for the last 10, 15 minutes, he's the only one that's calling with his box call because he can call really loud with it. Yeah, and I can I can call really loud with my mouth call, but I was just you know getting tired of it. So yeah. he was just walking with that box call, and he just rah, 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 and nothing. And then we go in all our you know 30, 20, 30, 40 yards, whatever. We stop call, nothing, nothing. And we just get about you know just where the there's a hemlock, a little bit of a hemlock mixed hardwoods woods comes together where it's just hardwoods. And uh, an owl, I mean, nine o'clock in the morning now, it's nine o'clock in the morning. I mean, I don't know where the morning went, but it was nine o'clock in the morning and and uh, owl lights up. And of course, as soon as we hear it, we stop and nothing, you know. So we're walking, we go another 20 yards and he lights up again. And next thing you know, poof, poof, gobble, I mean, within 150 yards. That's awesome. So right away we're like we backed up 20 yards and kind of got off this, this this little rise that we were on and they were you know i guess if if you're if you're you know, we're facing due north or if you're 12 o'clock they're at like 11 o'clock but over the rise you know 150 yards out so right. you know we set up at like five o'clock you know and back a little bit and and jamie set up behind us with the camera and doug and i set up about you know 10 feet apart but doug's kind of on his knees decide and like what do you think I should do with this decoy and we're going you know literally like a two minute two minute like we're discussing like you know we figured they were probably coming to the call and that Doug was doing with the box call you know right they never gobbled at it but we figured they were coming and 
after about two minutes and I'm all set up and I said to Doug, I go, just throw it on the ground. Don't even put a stick in it. And, you know, cause, cause prior, <laughs> prior was like, should we stick it in just right in front of us? But then if their focus is on us. Yeah, they, exactly. You know, so we were kind of stuck. So, so as soon as Doug just whipped it, you know, off to the side of him, um, I literally, I put my, had my mouth call in. I, I went, you know, three little, like soft, real quiet, like, and they just boom, they gobbled. I mean, they literally, they gobbled so, so loud that I all in one motion turned the scope on my, my red dot. I was carrying a camera as well. I hit the record on the camera that I had. And as I'm bringing my hands back to the gun, Doug's like, there they are. And they came right over top of the rise. And then they just start, you know, gobble and, and Doug had and I had a conversation, you know, we've been hunting together 30 years and, and, uh, or, you know, I guess to get close to 30 years. And, you know, we had a discussion in the morning, like, okay, what are we going to do? One, two, if we double up one, two, three, then shoot, you know, and, right. and we, you know, we agreed that that's what we would do. And, and no matter what, I'm taking the one on the right, no matter what, he's taking the one on the left. So hindsight, had he set that decoy up just a little bit, you know, if we would have been thinking just if we could have set it up out in front of us, those birds would have come off that rise and they would have come to it. But because they didn't see the hen, you know, that made that call, they just started heading right down the 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 little bit of the assignment or a ridge, but just like a, a roll, you know, in the woods and where the hemlocks and the hardwoods meet. So instead of, you know, if we're facing 12 o'clock, they're, they're literally heading, you know, parallel to us, but they're getting close. They're, you know, they're probably 35, 40 yards. And, and I say to Doug, I'm like, you want, okay, you ready? He goes, yeah, I'm ready. So I'm like, all right, one, two. And he's like, no, no, I can't, I can't. It's like, <laughs> so he's like, yeah. well, then I got the gun, you know, and me, you know, and that we're both, you know, righty. So we're both, you know, starting to, they're starting to go to our left, you know, and yeah. he's like, you ready? I'm like, yeah. Well, I had a little sapling just in front of the barrel of my gun. So I had to like go up and over it. Yeah. So I get up and over it and he's like, you know, and they're looking, they're rubbernecking hard. Like where, are the, where's this hen down there? Right. You know? But they don't want to commit. And then Doug's like, you know, one, two, I'm like, no, I can't shoot. I can't shoot. You know, cause the one <laughs> I was at was behind. And then literally 15 seconds later, Doug's like, Doug was so far turned that he goes, Scott, he goes, mine's gone. He goes, if you got a shot of yours, just take it. And literally he said that. And, the one that he was on walked just over the rise where you couldn't see him at all anymore. And the one I was, you know, on literally gave me his, you know, the bottom of his neck to his head. That's all I had of his body. Right. And, uh, you know, about 35, 40 yards. And I shot and he just flew straight up in the air and then straight down. And I was kind of the, the, the excitement of the hunt was a little, I was a little disappointed because I was like, damn, I go, we could have doubled. I was so bummed. Right. And then not seeing the, the bird drop, I was like, that's too far of a shot. I shouldn't have taken it. Doug's like, I think he's right over there, you know? So we go over there, and sure enough, he just went up and straight down, and, you know, he was nice. laying, laying there dead. So, um, you know, but that's just how it works out. I mean, and – It's it's so hard to plan those doubles. It is so hard to plan it. Especially in the, in the woods, you know, yeah. and, you know, just, you know, in a field or whatever, in a blind or whatever. It's just – it's obviously easier – but in the right. woods, and it was, you know, Doug and I had that same opportunity probably 20 years ago, but we had birds gobbling on either side of us. So I was facing one way, he was facing yeah. the other. And as we're calling, they're coming, they're both coming. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden he's like, I got to shoot. He goes, this thing's going to run me over. And, and the bird I had on was on was behind a huge cherry tree and, and his bird was at like seven yards. Oh and Jesus. I'm like, just shoot them. And then, yeah. he shot and then I, you know, but you know, so those are, you know, we've hunted an awful lot together. And it's the only two times that we've ever had a double where he ended up killing one and I didn't. And then this time I killed one and he didn't. So I told him we're even. <laughs> one, one of these times you'll make it happen. Yeah. One of these times, hopefully. So yeah. So it was, uh, you know, just a quick flash hunt and, uh, you know, we easily could have just gone to the other vehicle and just had squirrels right. go a different place. But knowing that those birds were there previously the night before and, you know, gobbling that morning, we're like, we might as well go back. And yeah, and that, we can put them on. the property that we were hunting opening day, my buddy Adams got permission on. And uh, we figured nobody else would be there, but it was, it's a very tight property. Like the one end is right along the edge of the field and then the other end's only like 
maybe five acres. And then it's all field beyond that. Mm -hmm. Um, but he's got a, uh, trail cam up in there, a cell cam. And it's been sending pictures of birds just every day. And he went up there, he went up there for the youth hunt and, uh, called in four long beards, seven o'clock in the morning. Um, just didn't work out. I think the birds got the drop on them. Um, and, and they turned and went away. And then as they were in that corner with those four long beards, there was trail cam pictures of six other ones that must've been coming into the field and saw movement down in the corner and they ran across in front of the trail camera. So we know there's a pile of them in there and we went in there on opening day. And of course you're all jacked up and you're like, Oh, they're going to be gobbling like crazy. You're in there early. And we didn't hear a freaking peep. (laughs) And uh, we ended up having a guy kitty corner us um, on the corner of the field. And we were like, God, nobody's supposed to be there, but, you know, like we, we can't shoot into the woods because it's ski slope property. Okay. And um, he shouldn't shoot into the field because it's the property that we had permission on. But it was just to the point where we were like, we're too close together and it's open in the morning and we're not hearing anything. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, let's get up and bail out. It's definitely a hunter. And it was funny because there's a guy um, that's in our hunting group that leased that neighboring property with my dad for years. And they quit leasing it this year, so I figured he wasn't there. Well, he got permission from the landowner above that to hunt that that property. Uh-huh. So we he he had texted us later in the morning, going, "You guys hearing anything?" And then we started talking. Come to, come to find out, we were sitting fifty yards from each other on open and morning. We had no idea <laughs> either person had permission to hunt either of the properties. <laughs> nice. So, um, I mean, it was a dead morning, but we went back to the middle of the field by the trail camera. We were like. Hey, you know what? There's been birds here every single day. They got to show up at some point. Right. And it was kind of like a clearing sky day. You know, it started off cloudy, went to blue skies. I was like, as soon as that sun hits, they'll fire up. We didn't hear a single thing all day. I called in one hand silent. That was it. No pictures later on the day after you guys left or anything. Nothing. Isn't that crazy? Like, so Ryan, the same thing. He's been getting pictures on a gas line of long beards every single day for before the season all the way you know since the first day and uh but they're not gobbling they're not right. gobbling no so he's there and and uh he set up in one of the spots today on it and uh he said he got a picture you know at one of his cell cams just down the gas line 100 yards of the long beard walking by it but it never made a sound which yeah, is kind so- of you know i don't know i don't know what you do if you're not gobbling it's tough right you know it's tough to say you know, even if you know the birds are there and they're not gobbling, when you know that you can probably go to another piece of property, possibly, and then there's a bird fired up. Well, it's crazy because opening day, we had pretty much from the one road to the other side of the ski slope covered, which is well over driving down the road. It's probably over four miles. And we had that whole block covered (laughs) and not one person was hearing a gobble. So when when we were sitting there trying to figure out what to do, I was like, nobody's hearing anything. I'm like, it's not just us. It's not like we're sitting here and everybody else is hearing them. So we we held tight. And then the second day we were like, we got to go back in there. We know they've been there. So we went back in there the second day. I again heard nothing off a roost. And by seven o'clock in the morning, I was like, dude, I'm out of (laughs) here. I was like, I'm going somewhere else. I can't (laughs) sit here again all day. So we yeah. went, we went to state land. And like you said, we, um, we actually split up. We were like hundred, 150 yards apart. Um, and I would call and then, you know, we'd drop over a ridge and come up the next ridge and then he would call and we would just call back and forth. And we covered about two and a half miles of side hill and there was just acorns everywhere. And there was a little bit, uh, scratchings here and there, but yeah but nothing super fresh and we just never fired anything up the whole entire time. So not what you would think if there's acorns, I really think it'd be scratched up like crazy. I know. So I was totally baffled after the first two days. Um, third day I went to a farm with a buddy, um, up in the flatland, which I hadn't hunted yet. So I went up there with him and they were gobbling their ass off on roost. And I was like, well, at least I've heard a gobble now. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I think there was a combination of things that happened there. I think there was a, there was definitely another hunter in the corner um, north of us on the block of woods. We were back on the hedgerow a little bit right on the property line. And there was definitely another hunter in there, but also um, the kid said in the past, the birds 
tend to head west. No matter where they roost, they tend to head west. Hmm. And I didn't know that when we set up there and we were on the east edge. Um, and they did, by the time the, the long, long beard gobbled twice on the ground, um, and then I started calling, getting aggressive, and I fired all the jakes up, and then the long beard gobbled again, and he had moved from the corner almost halfway down the woods, heading for the west corner. So at that point, I pretty much knew a hen had him, and he was on his yeah. way out. Yeah. But I tried calling the jakes in anyways, but a bunch of deer busted out of the woods and actually ran at us. So I'm not sure if there was somebody on the north edge of the woods or something that spooked yeah. a pile of deer, and they came piling out of there, and we never heard another turkey. So Yeah, deer never help, help matters, that's for sure. No, nope. so then I hunt, hunted another farm till noon. Um, didn't hear a damn thing. So, hmm. yeah, I've uh, I had my school yesterday, so I hunted just one of my good buddies had uh, um, well, it's the property that Jamie actually killed. I don't know if you guys are gonna get him on, he'll talk about that hunt or not. But I went to one of the properties I had permission to hunt, and another good buddy of mine just got a new video camera and we were going to hook up and he's already killed a bird and I had killed a bird already. So I said, well, a week ago walking my dog, I accidentally called in two birds, you know, a week before the season. <laughs> I thought I heard a war bird way, way down. And I, and I, so I go, I always bring my calls and I just gave a call. Well, sure enough, it wasn't, that bird didn't gobble, but down below me, you know, within a hundred yards, a bird lights up. I'm like, Oh crap. I'm like, you know, so I'm, <laughs> literally hiding behind a beach tree got the dog by the leash and you know got him down and a lot and he's if i tell him to stay and just stick a treat in front of his face he'll stay he'll stay right. for a couple minutes just because he's so focused on that treat yeah. and uh, he's just sitting there so that bird literally gobbles and walks by me at 35 years never even saw me and just kept going well <laughs> while that bird was gobbling another one lit up and was coming so i'm trying to creep around the tree binoculars and just as that bird showed himself, he must have saw something he didn't like, and he turned around, and he just went straight away. But, again, I was only wearing a hoodie and jeans, so I wasn't like, you know, yeah. you know, I did call, which I don't really like to do that, obviously. if I Normally, if I make a call and I hear a bird gobble, I just shut right up, and that's it, you know, and just walk yeah. out of there just to see if there was birds there. So then, fast forward to yesterday, my buddy goes, I really just want to get a good video. And so he gets here, and I'm like, I go, I don't really want to shoot one. He's like, I already shot one, and I go – my buddies, you know, that haven't shot one, I, I, you know, I'd like to go and have, you know, them shoot one. And, and he goes, right. I don't really want to shoot one either. He goes, you know, cause his one main property he wants to go to, if he had not got a bird, we would have gone there and I would have tried to run the camera for him. And so I go, well, let's go. I go, if it turns out to be a really good video, I'll shoot, you know, and sure enough, we get there, we hear a bird gobbling. We set up first place we set up. It's down right below us. And it's coming. And I just, you know, once I got, once I let that bird know that we were there, I literally just real quiet heard and just putted a little bit. And instead of coming straight up at us, which we were looking down a real long hill, um, pretty open. And we thought he was going to come that way. And, and as he's getting closer and then he just shuts up. And I said to my buddy, I'm like, he was coming, you know? And then I'll, I, I hear him spitting. And I go, you hear, hear him spitting? And my buddy's like, it's just a little bird. You know, he thinks it's like a little <laughs> punk. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I go, there he is. Well, he was to the right of us. Instead of coming straight at us, because our backs are to the trees, like if, he, if we were thinking he'd come straight at us, you know? Right. So he's to the right of us, 35 yards, and he comes walking right out. Now, I knew it wasn't a good video. I knew that, you know, like I said, I really wasn't anxious to shoot one just because I want one of my buddies to get one that hasn't gotten one yet. You don't want to tag out this early either, though. Well, yeah, and I just, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I got a lot of people that I want to go with, and, and I just figured, you know what? I, so had I not shot the bir a bird date, you know, an opening day or whatever, I would have had my gun up, you know, as soon as I heard that spitting, because I knew it was, you know, I mean, it's just, you know, yeah. 35 yards, you know. I mean, it was I heard oh, yeah. it at 50 or 60 yards, you know. And uh, but that bird get cleared just one tree. And I'm like, well, if he clears this tree, I go, I'm going to put my gun up on him. And just before he got to that tree, he must have seen my buddy or me. I'm thinking he saw my buddy just the way he was sitting on the tree he was on. Like it was a, you know, 
the, the way the bird was looking at him, it was probably perfectly silhouetted like a guy sitting there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And all that Ed bird never alarm putted or nothing. He just turned around and walked straight away from us. Like, had I not killed a bird, I would I would have put that dot on his head, and I mean, I would have <laughs> I would have hammered him. Um, so he just walked away. He got to 80 yards and he gobbled again, and you know, just straight away from us, 80 yards, he gobbled. So, you know, my buddy's like, "Do you want to go try setting up around?" I'm like, "No." I go, "I'm just gonna come back here tomorrow with one of the guys if they want to." You know, one of the other guys that don't have a bird. And then, sure enough, we went there today, and it didn't work out as easy as that. Like that was like you know, <laughs> right the roost. But, you know, you could probably get Jamie on here at some point and he'll tell the whole story and uh, just cool. It just worked out like, you know, we, we killed a bird and we ended up hearing another bird there too. So we know there's another one there to go after, you know, once it calms down a little bit. Yeah, I'll have to catch up with him. I think um, another kid killed one yesterday. So I got it. We're kind of going off our uh, turkey challenge list here on okay. stories. So cool. um I've caught up with most people. Um, the girl that's actually winning it right now, I haven't been able to get in touch with her. I got to try to figure out how to get in touch with her. But um, if there was, uh, if it was possible to win every category, she's taken it so far. Oh, really? <laughs> that was a yeah. good one, huh? Yeah, it was a good bird. The 10 and three quarter inch beard, um, 2.1 inch spurs and 48 and a quarter long. 2.1 inch spurs that's what it says come on i've never seen a bird over inch and a half i seen inch and, a, inch and five ace maybe i mean i'm not saying it's not possible i think she sent the pictures we gotta i'll have to double check but holy moly that's <laughs> yeah i mean it's just a giant bird yeah so no, no doubt luck, luckily you can't win every category with one bird so yeah because i would take it all yeah exactly and i've uh you know years you know, I don't know how long we've been turkey hunting, obviously, but I just, I really want to get a bird mounted. And uh, I've killed a handful of birds at inch and a quarter, inch and, I got one that's like inch and five sixteenths. And, but when I killed those birds, I just never had the money to get one mounted, you know, and, right. and now where I'm in a position where I would like to get one mounted. But I told myself, you know, since I decided probably the last five, six years, I'm like, if I shoot an inch and a quarter or better and it's got better than a nine inch beard, I go, I'm going to get it mounted. But I still haven't done that. Oh, you know what? That's, I wonder if that's spur length time, the both spurs added together, I bet. Oh, well, maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm looking at it wrong. I think it's both together because yours oh. is listed as 1.8. Okay. Yeah. That was both of them together. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that makes more sense. Okay. Yeah. That makes more sense because. So they were a little over an inch spur on hers. So. Yeah, but no, that's a great bird. I was trying to get her on, but I haven't been able to get in touch with her. And then I think another kid out your guys' way, Al Fagan, um, got one yesterday. So I got to try to hook up with him. Nice. But yeah, I'll definitely well, hook, I'll, I'll hook up with Jamie and get his story. I told Billy, I said, you know, we're going to have a whole bunch right off the bat here. Yeah, um, for sure. And I think – I said, I mean, we'll, get, we'll, we'll get them all recorded, and, you know, we're going to need some to fill in the end because it dies right off normally. But. normally but i think I, I i tell you there's been a lot of people hunting obviously you yeah. know coronavirus i think a lot of guys just want to go out you know because it's yeah. something to do um but i also hope that it just doesn't destroy the population either because it's been kind of crappy and it's been coming back a little bit here you know well so far for us i mean last year we took four birds in the first three days at camp and we haven't touched one yet, so. <laughs> well, that's what, you know, down our camp, we usually have birds all over the place, and uh, my brother and dad hunted down there first couple of days, and I mean, they, they worked one bird one day, but normally there's two or three. Normally, we got a bunch of pictures on our on our uh, food plot, nothing this year, so yeah. it's like way, way down from normal, but that could change in a, a week's time, too, you know, they could just move in and. Yeah, I think, I don't think they're where they normally are at this point yet. And I feel like there's a lot of birds together, a lot of toms together. Yes. Where they'll, they'll Absolutely. Separate. But I will say today on our walk, after we killed that, Jamie killed that bird, we came back. Uh, we picked up our buddy's son to take him. And we did that uh, walk in the same spot where I killed my bird. And we bumped a hen off her nest and she had about 10, 12 eggs. So I just heard that, I think, from the kid, Nick Scott, that I interviewed that killed Billy's bird. 
Um, mm-hmm. I interviewed him and I think he said that he came across the nest behind his house that had 14 eggs in it already. Yeah. So I guess the more they're nesting, the, 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 the more the times are going to start really looking. Yeah. We're looking at some cold weather coming up here and I think all these birds are going to be, or all the hens are going to be sitting on their nests. So yeah, hopefully that'll sure. free some gobblers up. Yeah. And I wonder if that will make a difference. You know, a lot of guys might not want to go cause they think the weather's shitty and this and that, but I wonder if, like you said, the hens sitting on the nest yeah. might fire the birds up even more or make them look even harder. Yeah. So it'll be an interesting couple of weeks here. Yeah. We'll see. For sure. Now, hopefully, well, I'm going to call your brother now and uh, see what we're plan is if we're going to go in the morning or not. So let get him a bird. If you're going out. with him. Don't plan on hearing anything. I know that's what it sounds. Like. Well, I gotta <laughs> maybe I'll have to take him to one of my spots. We'll see. It's, a, it's the Harvey curse so far this year. Nobody's freaking gotten one in the Harvey family. So hopefully we turn that around. Yeah, you guys will just stick it out. Oh yeah. So I yeah I ended up working. I'm, I've been doing four tens. I was planning on taking a four day opening weekend, but I ended up switching that up um, so I could stick with three day weekends. Um, cause I just didn't feel it was that hot this past weekend. So. Yeah, no, uh, I really don't think it was. And, and like a lot of people saying, they know birds are there. They're not gobbling. So yeah, that, it could change overnight though, too. So absolutely. And it's so, weird too. Some people are, are got birds screaming and then in other areas, people aren't here, you know, they know they're there, but they're not hearing them. So I don't know what, I don't know what that is. Me neither. Try to try to act like you know what's going on, but you have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I, I just kind of like when Jamie said about Carter's hunt or whatever. I'm always like, try to be the voice to reason, but if I can take an aggressive approach and think we can yeah. get away with it, I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because I think that's your your best opportunity. Yeah, you might, bust, you might bust them, but yeah, it just makes it more of a challenge later in the season. There's, yeah, there's always the next day or the day after, so. Thanks for hopping on here and uh, good luck to you and Billy if you get out in the morning and we'll have have to. to, uh, uh, Yeah, good luck to you. Thanks for having me on. My internet connection just went sour there. Oh oh boy. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Thanks for hopping on. Congratulations and hopefully you go get another one. All right. Yeah. Thanks for having me and good luck to you. Yeah. Good luck to you too. All right. Take care. See ya. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Breeding Radio with Pertinier Outdoors. And make sure to give us a rating on whatever the platform is you're listening to. Uh, give us a you know, five star or if, uh, if you think this sucked, give us a one star. But definitely looking for the feedback. Uh, your participation helps greatly for us to make sure we continue to put some good content together for you. So thank you. Enjoy your week and good luck out in the woods.